or two of my favorite pieces. What does your soul look like? She asked me. I searched for the perfect metaphor to describe the past week. Maybe a crisp pair of Tim's, a meadow in the fall, black air forces on the rebel of the course, a slice from the city when you folded the grease, the calm before a storm while you're smoking in peace. Or maybe it's the thunder, lightning and disruption, chaos in the eye of the storm, and this was seduction. The devil wears gray sweats in the summer while he stretches, with a promise of perfection in the portrait that he sketches. A sun setting slowly over New York skies, a moment of honesty told through more lies, a contradiction that makes perfect sense with convincing, a bowl of dim sum made of rolled up conviction, a reflection that rejects the premise of his existence, a shadow that prefers to keep things out of distance, a mystery to myself I can't even see me clearly, the ink that I'm writing this way keeps disappearing. What does my soul look like? You tell me, you have a good view, a front row seat of my movie on what I could do. Have a look around my mind, I don't get a lot of guess. Have a seat inside my heart, a list of beating in my chest. Have a look through my eyes, see through my perspective. Take me by the hand, you'll see that we're connected. My soul is camera shy, so elusive is concealed. Waiting for the perfect time to be revealed. When I hold you in my arms, we can slow the tempo. Then I'll look you in your eyes. What does your soul resemble? This one is called The Wizard. I don't need to make wishes to deliver me riches. The words of spells them, we are all wizards and witches. Warlocks and enchantresses, the words dances, Every poem is filled with incantations translated. The words of spells, then my actions are alchemy. Cause in my mind's eye, I create the world as only I can see. Magic, it pours out of me, it's never gonna end. When I recite the shit I write, I'm having potter with the pen. I manipulate the energy that bound me. That's why I hate dreams. When I'm awake, I create what's around me. I'm lucid at all times, the truth is it's all mine. So I'm just here to spread love and make Cupid a small time. And what words I'm holding more? Hold on, trying to hold the door. Everything I'll never become, I've never known before. So what's a man's mission who's stuck in transition? Manifest that shit. You're a fucking magician. Nelson, was that your first time on the stage? That was my second time on the stage. Second time. Great, great, great. Where can we find you on social media? Oh, it's uh, Nelly Mel 82. Say it again? It's Nelly Mel. It's N-E-L-L-E-N-E-L 82. Got you. Y'all give it up for Nelson one more time. <laughs> Y'all ready for the next open micer on this stage? Yeah. Y'all still with me? Yeah. Y'all give it up for Jill. Come on, Jill. Come to Emotional estate, a 
place I thought I'd never leave because my bones were charred. But then something happened, and I don't know if it was an epiphany or my soul's last cry of agony. Maybe a door appeared. No, maybe a door was open, one that had always been there, but I assumed would be locked. And through that door, I found the emotions that I had kept so far from my fragile bones. And they rocked me. They dragged me across parchment, scratched at my tibia, ground down on every finger, splintering each rib from its pair. I knew my bones were charcoal, and that they would make life terribly messy. That they would love things so deeply that entire pages would be filled with ashy monologues, with endless shades for pain and loss and shame. I have charcoal bones, meaning I hold my feelings very carefully. But I'm learning that as an artist, grace comes from holding fragile things, despite your fear of them breaking. But this inky, muddled mess of feelings won't crumble me or splinter me. My charcoal bones will project my beauty, a fearless, messy sort of happy, a willingness to cry in strength and smile through agony. But my life I write, nonetheless, with my bones made of charcoal. Here's number two. It's called Coffee After Ten. I did it again. I had coffee after ten. Like, fuck you, son, the day's not done. With this caffeine in my bloodstream, I'll energize these tired eyes and unionize them fireflies. I'll take time and a half. With productivity, that's unmatched. Coffee after ten. Blesses you with visions, a determination that a task can be started and actually finished. Although in the morning, the result is often questioned. But I did it again, an elixir too potent, only for the creatures that emerge when daylight has fallen. You're counting sheep, I'm writhing and raving, words flowing, synapses glowing, metabolizing this trigger of midnight vigor. Oh, coffee after ten, like really strong spearmint, like adrenaline. Like a lover who's sexy, but secretly a virgin. It's so naughty, I'm huh? just drinking my coffee. And no one will stop me, cheating on my pillow, pacing around my place. This weakness I feel has real and fucking taste. I had coffee after 10. Yep, did it again. Couldn't bear to say goodbye and close the day with the door on the night. Chemically nocturnal, physiologically unstable, fatigue and suspense. Not surprised, I had coffee after 10. You can also follow me on Insta, it's 